I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Here the word of the Lord commands us and exhorts us and encourages us. That if there is anything essential, anything important, anything we need to hold on until the end of time, it is the old landmark. And he puts it in the singular. He bundles everything together. Everything we've learned, everything we've heard, all the revelation of the word of God. He tells us, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said is talking about the sacrifice of our fathers those the people that have been called by god and when you think about the revelation of the word of god it's coming all the way from moses all the way from the psalmist david all the way coming from abraham all the way coming from all the prophets and many of those prophets refer to there as our fathers. They suffered with their lives. They laid down their very lives because of the word, the revelation the Lord gave to them. And then the Lord is saying, those fathers in the faith and those heroes of faith and those great men and women of the past, they have laid the foundation. And they've given us the landmark. And it says, remove not those ancient landmarks. These new days and these modern times, there are people that will not cherish the old landmark. They like to replace it. And the Lord is saying, no, no, not at all. It must not be done. It should not be done. It should not be done intentionally. It should not be done carelessly. It should not be done by forgetfulness. It should not be done because of the difficulties or challenges we have. There are some of the words we read in the Bible. And they are challenging. And sometimes they might be difficult. And it says, just because you have some challenges or difficulties, that doesn't mean that you will remove any of the ancient landmarks in fact it tells us again in chapter 23 of verse 10 chapter 23 and verse 10 remove not the old landmark it says that again it says the old landmark is being watched over by the lord himself he made those patriarchs of old those preachers of old and those prophets of old he made them to search the old landmarks and he said, remove them not. It says, peradventure, there are people that will want to remove them. What do you do with them? Chapter 24. Chapter 24 and verse 21. It says, my son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Meddle not with them that are given to change. There are people that they say they are fed up with the old landmarks and they want to change they want to modify and they want to mutilate the word of god it says don't agree with them don't partake with them don't share with them don't befriend them don't support them meddle not with them that are giving to change you come to the new testament and in first timothy chapter 4 1 Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 15. 
Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto many. Take it unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. It says, your eternity it has, is at stake. And the eternal welfare of the people you are preaching to is at stake. If you do not keep on to the old landmarks, meditate and think through. And look at the implication of the word of God that comes to you. And now you have to pass that word across without diminishing from it and without adding unto it. The old landmarks in modern times. There are three things we are going to consider. Number one, the foundation. Number two, the falsehood. Number three, the faithfulness. Number one, the foundation and doctrine of the master's landmarks. The master himself, the Lord himself, our Savior himself, has laid the foundation. He has given us the masterpiece. He has given us the landmarks. And it goes beyond Moses, goes beyond Abraham, and goes beyond David. It goes beyond all the prophets of old. Because he is the word personified. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And he became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. He is full of grace and full of truth. And he said... If you continue in my word, not the word of Moses. If you continue in my word, not that of Abraham, of David. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. He laid the foundation. The foundation and doctrines of the master's landmarks. Point number two. The falsehood and danger of modern day liars. False prophets are liars. False teachers are liars. The people that are to the word of God are liars. Those who subtract from the word of God are liars. Those who change the old landmarks and they want to replace it by the tradition of man, by the teaching of man, by the doctrines of denominations. Those are liars to the Lord. The falsehood and the danger of modern day liars. Number three, the faithfulness of disciples with ministerial loyalty. The faithfulness of disciples with ministerial loyalty. Come to number one, the foundation and doctrine of the master's landmarks. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builders thereupon, thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Paul the apostle said, the foundation matters a lot. He said, according to the wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. If you are not building on that foundation, you are not wise. If you don't have that same foundation, you are not wise. If you build on another column, on another landmark, on another piece of land, except the one Christ himself has laid down, you are not wise. Look at verse 11. For all the foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The Lord himself laid the foundation. And the Lord himself is the foundation. Jesus is a savior. That's a foundation. Jesus is a sanctifier. That's a foundation. 
Jesus is our healer. That's the foundation. Jesus is our power. That's the foundation. Jesus is the coming king. That's the foundation. Jesus, the sanctifier, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. That's the foundation. Everything we believe. Everything we should teach. Everything we stake our lives upon is the foundation of Christ. It tells us in Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 47. Luke chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 47. Here the Lord himself tells us, he laid the foundation. He gave the message. He declared the truth. And he tells us, truth sufficient. Sufficient for salvation. And sufficient for sanctification. And sufficient for sustenance. And sufficient to take us unto heaven. Luke chapter 6. And I'm reading here from verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Laid the foundation on a rock. Have you noticed the foundation of Christ's message? Have you noticed what he said? Have you noticed what he proclaimed? Have you, have you noticed what he gave us? He gave us the totality of the word we need for us to get to heaven. And for us to make it on that final day, we'll make it in Jesus' name. I said you will make it in Jesus' name. He has given us that word. He has given us the truth. As we look at the word of Jesus, because he says over here, He that heareth my sayings. What are his sayings? He says, repent and believe ye the gospel. He preached repentance. That's foundational. He said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He said, it's not just religion. It's not just that I'm coming to church. I believe, I believe, I believe. What do you believe? He said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spoke about faith. He said, except you believe that I am he, the only way to salvation, the way, the truth, and the life, ye shall in no wise get into the kingdom of God. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is the way that leads to the Father. Do you remember you spoke about restitution when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that somebody has ought against you you don't uh, say well that doesn't matter that's his feeling that's what he feels about it i will still offer my gift anyhow he taught restitution is he taught restoration he said you leave your gift there at the altar and you go back to him and you apologize and you make right and reconcile with the offended brother and then you come back to offer your gift it taught repentance it taught faith in christ it taught restitution it taught righteousness and it taught about salvation it said i am come to seek and to save the lost that's salvation it said except your righteousness shall exceed and go beyond the righteousness of the scribes of the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He taught purity of heart, holiness, sanctification. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It says, if you forget all that foundation and you're doing church, no repentance. You're doing church, no restitution. You're doing church, no faith in Christ. You're doing church, no righteousness. You're doing church, no holiness, no purity, no sanctification. He said, it is useless. You must build on the foundation. He taught water baptism. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. You are born again. You must be baptized in water. That's the foundation Christ laid. Didn't he tell us? He gave them the bread. He gave them the wine. And then he said, 
do this in remembrance of me. The Lord's Supper. He taught that. What did he say about marriage? He said, look at this one. In Luke chapter 16, he taught marriage, husband and wife, one man, one wife, until death do us part. Luke chapter 16. I'm reading here from verse 18. It tells us in Luke chapter 16 and verse 18. See what he said about marriage. Whosoever, a bishop, a pastor, whosoever, a seminary done, whosoever, educated man, whosoever, illiterate man, whosoever, put it away his wife. And marries another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband, committeth adultery. You see, that's what he taught. And he said, that is the foundation. And Paul the Apostle coming on said, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and let every man, every preacher, every prophet, every evangelist, every minister, every worker, let everyone take heed how he buildeth thereupon. It will surprise you and it will jolt you to understand. Immediately Jesus spoke about that marriage and he spoke about no divorce. And he spoke about stay with your wife until you die. He spoke about hell. Look at verse 19. And there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen. And then he said he feared sumptuously every day. And the other was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of souls, designing to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the masters from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and he was taken by angels to abraham's bosom and the rich man died also and was and he was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. He has spoken about marriage. And you know the problem in the world is like many people in the world, they don't want to think about the correct way in marriage and the right way in marriage and the word of the Lord concerning marriage. But immediately Jesus spoke about adultery and he spoke about that or clean life. Of a man leaving the wife marrying another and of a woman leaving her husband and marrying another he spoke about hell not only that he spoke about evangelism and he gave that great commission to the whole church and all the members and he said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and do you know that he spoke about backsliding he said in luke in um, john chapter 15 I'm reading here from verse 6. In John chapter 15 verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are 